In this video, we'll look at using pop-up modals in Blazor. A pop-up modal is a little message window that pops up and dims the current page. It requires the user to interact with the pop-up before work can continue. We'll start by creating a new Blazor web app. For our demo, we'll be using a server project, but you can choose WebAssembly if you like. If you do choose a server project, remember to set the interactive location to per page or component. First, we need to install and set up the Bootstrap package. If you browse to docs.blazorbootstrap.com, you'll find instructions under Getting Started, depending on whether your project is a WebAssembly or server app. If you're already familiar with setting up Bootstrap, you can skip to the next section. You can find the different sections in the description below. First, we'll need to install the Blazor Bootstrap package. Then, from the instructions, copy the CSS references and paste them into the head section of your app.razor file. You can also remove any previous references to Bootstrap. Also copy the script references from the instructions and also add them into the app.razor file just after the web.js reference. Finally, we'll add the service to our program CS file. and add a using statement to the imports file so we don't need to repeat it in our page components. First, we'll add a new Razor page to the Pages folder to use as a launch pad for our pop-up. We'll call is something like modal demo page. We'll turn it into a page component, and if you're using a server project, set the render mode to interactive server. The first piece of HTML is our page layout. There's a button called show modal that when clicked, will call a method to show our pop-up. Notice we declared a modal type variable. This will represent our pop-up window. In the second part, we actually define our modal. It references the modal variable from the code section. The title attribute will be the title that is displayed in the modal. Then the body template defines the content of the body. And the footer template will display two buttons. The close button will call a method to hide our modal when clicked. The save changes button is just window dressing and doesn't do anything. Then, just to make things more convenient, we added a menu link to our modal demo page in the navmenu.razor file. When we run this, it shows our little modal demo page, and we can click on the Show Modal button to show the modal. The page is dimmed, and the modal slides in from the top. Here we can see the title,
body and footer with the two buttons. When we click the close button, the modal closes. However, there's a little problem. When we click outside the modal, it also closes. That's not very modal-like. Let's go fix that. To prevent the user from clicking the background, we add the use static backdrop attribute to our modal element and set it to true. Another attribute we can add is close on escape and set it to false. This prevents the modal from closing when the user presses the escape button. Now when we click outside our modal, it won't close. It will only close when we click the close button. By default, the modal window is already horizontally centered, but we can also center it vertically by adding the is vertically centered attribute and setting it to true. If, for example, you have a lot of information to display in the body section of the modal window, you can make it scrollable by setting the is scrollable attribute to true. Here in the body template, we've added some large elements for demonstration. The modal has four predefined sizes, extra large, large, regular, and small. To demonstrate these sizes, we've added another page called Modal Size Page and added four modal elements to it. Each modal element will refer to its own modal variable in code and will have a button in its footer template to close the modal. We've added the size attribute to each modal and set it to one of the modal size enumerated values. There's the extra large size, the large size, the regular size, and of course the small size. Then we've added four buttons to the page to open each of the four modals. Let's see the different sizes. The extra large modal, the large modal, the regular modal, and the small modal. Of course, you can also make the modal fill the entire page. For example, it may hold some complex form a user needs to complete before moving on in the application. To make a model full screen, set its full screen attribute to the modal full screen always value. A modal can also display a razor component. In this example, the modal is displaying the person details component. After passing the person's ID to the modal, which in turn passes it onto the component, the person's details are retrieved and displayed. To do this, we first created the person component. Its HTML part simply displays labels and values from a person record. In the code, we have a person object and a person ID parameter. After the page is loaded, it will use the person ID parameter to retrieve the person data. In this case, we simply hard-coded a new person object. We then added a razor page that will contain the modal and called it modal comp page. Here you can see we added a modal element but didn't specify any content for it. The modal starts as undefined. The person component will become the content of this modal. There's a button that will execute a method to show the modal. When this happens, a dictionary is created to hold the parameters that needs to be sent to the person component in the modal. The string key is the parameter name, and the object is the value of the parameter. With that in hand, we can show the modal and specify that it must address the person component inside the modal. We then pass it the title of the modal and the parameters for the person component. 
when we click the Show Person component, the modal is displayed with the Loaded Person component. Just like normal intercomponent communication, the component in the modal can also signal back to the parent page. There's a link to a video on component communication in the description below. To accomplish this, we'll first start with the parent page. Here we set up a little display that will show the number of times this parent page received a callback from the component in the modal. We need to set an event callback parameter in the component and tell it that if the event fires, then execute the parent's show message method. The show message method simply increments the callback count variable and notifies that the page must update. In the component, we added the event callback parameter that is set from the parent page and fires off the event when a button is clicked. The last thing we're going to look at are the modal events. Here we added all five events to our modal and set it up to execute a method in our code section when the event occurs. The on showing event fires when the modal is called. The on shown event fires after the modal is displayed. The on hiding event fires when the modal is busy closing. The on hidden event fires after the modal is closed and the onHide prevented event fires when the modal prevents us from clicking on the background to close the modal. Then we set up a little display of the last modal event and created all the methods that are called when the individual events occur. Keep an eye on the events. When we open the modal, it will go from showing to shown. When we try to click outside the modal, the hide prevented event is fired. Then when we close the modal, it will go from hiding to hidden. Thank you for watching our video. For more tutorials on C Sharp, hit subscribe and click the reminder. Give us a like so the video can be visible to more people.